Thank you for joining me uh, for this session on Donors Choose. Donors Choose is something that I absolutely fell in love with my last year in the classroom. Uh, it w gave me the option to purchase items for my students. It oftentimes gave me an opportunity to purchase the items that my students were interested in. Uh, they helped select some of the items. It also gave me an opportunity to purchase items for the classroom that I needed, uh, that I didn't have other resources for, maybe I didn't have funding options for, uh, or uh, I was not a big fan of handling cash, and you may feel the same way. Uh, with all that's happening in a classroom, sometimes it's very difficult to deal with collecting and receiving money. And so Donor Choose was a great way for me to get the items that I needed for my classroom uh, uh, in a much easier and simpler way way. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to take you through Donors Choose and show you just how easy it is for you uh, to do this. Uh, I would even recommend that you consider going ahead and going to DonorsChoose.org now and working through the process with me if you would like. I've got my PowerPoint here. Of course, we were intended to view this in person, um, but uh, that didn't happen. So I've got my PowerPoint here to help guide us along. And then also uh, I'm here uh, on my screen on the browser. So one of the things that I love about Donors Choose, this is tried and true. This has been around for a while. Uh, you may have pe know people that have done this. But if you look at the dollars raised, the number of projects funded, uh, how many schools and how many students are helped, uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. It's very effective, very simple to use. After the first grant that I wrote, um, or project that I wrote, I really kind of caught the donor's shoes bug. And not only did I continue to present projects, uh, but I actually started running around looking for other people that I could help uh, because it was just so simple. Okay, so the basic process is you're going to request items that you want. And these items are going to, you can actually shop right inside Donors Choose. Uh, once you get them funded, they ship the goods directly to you at your school. So you do not have to be involved in uh, purchase orders or requests or, or anything like that. As soon as your project is funded, they ship it to you immediately. Okay, so over here I have gone to the uh, donorschoose.org as you see, and then if you click sign in there, uh, here's the sign in button. Okay, and you'll notice that there is a first timer button here. And I'm um, sorry, there's a create account. So this is where you're probably going to want to go is to create an account here. So if we come over here, uh, do not use your school email. It will caution you to do this. That's why I've got that Gmail account up there. And the reason for that is you probably know that your district uh, department has probably blocked a lot of emails. I know sometimes we even had issues with parents being able to contact us. So I would highly recommend that you use a, uh, a, a Gmail or some kind of personal account there, okay? And then it uh, asks you to select your school. Uh, this is one that I did. So once funded, uh, your items are sent directly to your campus. So you need to make sure that you find your school. Uh, it does automatically select. So if you see here, it says next select my school. And there's a drop down there that's very easy to use. I think you begin typing in and then it will auto populate. So for example, um, I did an example where I did Franklin County Career Tech Program. Uh, and so it pulled up this information automatically. You don't even have to come up with the address. Remember the address for your school. And then what do your students call you? Okay, one new thing that has come up due to COVID, this is not an option that was available when I was in the classroom, uh, but this allows for uh, deliveries to be made when your school is closed. Uh, so it says if you plan on uh, to request resources for at home use by you or your students, uh, there is a distance learning option. So go ahead and think about that in advance. Uh, they can be shipped to any address. Um, however, if it is a standard or a PD project, those have to go to your school. 
So now that you've gotten uh, logged in, so you're going to come to this welcome screen. Now see, this one will appear uh, on your first time. It may be slightly different. I'm not sure how long this distance learning option is going to be available. Once you are uh, in and you are returning to your account, you'll have something that's more like this. Um, but a few options that you see here, do notice it says materials will be shipped to one address of your choosing. Uh, who is intended recipient of these materials? Uh, you, your students, or the teacher. Again, me, the teacher, this is probably going to go away with the distance learning option. So just keep that in mind. If this, these are, things are not there, uh, that was specific to respond to the pandemic. So it probably will be not very long lived. Uh, here are the apply the campaign code. Do not dismiss this little line here. This is a very important option for you to check out anytime you're creating new po uh, pro projects. Excuse me. Campaign codes are a great way for you to get an added benefit anytime you create a project. If you click in there, you're going to see that there's some what's called match offers. Uh, match offers can be uh, a one-to-one, -one, you know, every dollar that, that is donated, another company, another organization donates a dollar uh, on their behalf. It could be that it's uh, three-quarters matching. It, it could be that you have a temporary uh, two times donation. There's lots of different options there. There's also opportunities where, let's say you are looking for safety equipment and somebody has put a, an opportunity out there. If you do uh, X, Y, Z, then uh, we will fund you. We, we will give you a lump sum of say $100 for your safety project. So before you start a campaign, please always select that, that and look through the opportunities there some of those campaign codes you can only add it at the beginning when you are creating a project some of them you can bring on board during your project but be sure to check that out before you move on okay so again here we have the choosing your project type again please uh, don't be upset with me if um, this opportunity for distance learning uh, goes away. Here it is going to ask you to verify your school address and that's just to make sure that you are actually employed at the school. Okay and so then we have our about your students section. So I'm just going to do a standard project. Remember this is the live browser over here. So this is our PowerPoint. This is um, I'm trying to show you exactly how I would um, navigate through this. So here we have for you to choose your grade level. I notice it says select all that apply. I, I would do I would make sure that you thought as in, inclusively as possible when you fill out this information because the greater the benefit that you are indicating to a donor, uh, the more likely you are to get a lot of uh, donations. So uh, if I was a high school, I would go ahead and do 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th. Number of students, for me, I taught in a team, and so I would not only count the students that I taught, I would also count the students in the other three classes because what that would do, uh, of course, we were great about sharing information and sharing uh, materials, and so I could very easily and honestly say not only did my students benefit from it, but so did the other students uh, in my department. So think as inclusively as you can. If you plan on sharing this with all of your instructors, think of that. If, it, if it's uh, you're going to share with other people in your cluster, think of that. Uh, but try to be as inclusive as possible. Uh, if you teach uh, first semester and a different set of second semester, go ahead and count both. Okay, so now here, this one, um, is uh, describing your students. Now I have a couple of suggestions for you on that. I would um, go to my uh, continuing improvement plan for my school. Um, those you may have to go to your home school, but there will be information there already typed up in an a easy to read format that you could actually just copy and paste. And so that's a good resource to use documents that are already created so that you do not have to create this information on your own. Let me show you where I pulled this information from. So what I wanted to do was to describe the area and what I did is I went to the Franklin County Schools 
website and I found this lovely already created bit of information here. So I pulled that and I pulled that into my donors choose. Now I did add some information on here uh, about my students specifically. Um, so you can use that as a starting point and then alter that any way you choose. Another option for you, and this is what I did uh, when I was in the classroom when I was creating mine, is I would, went to my school's website and I went to the continuous improvement plan and I pulled up the most recent copy and as you can see there's the description of the school and I pulled from this information here so this actually had some great demographic information in there as well so you may want to consider uh, those type of data as well to put into your description so save and continue Okay, so go shopping. So this is the fun part. So uh, do keep an eye out for these special notices. I think these will continue to kind of change as, as events change with the pandemic. So uh, I can't tell you all the details about these things because they're constantly changing. Okay, now this is one of the things that I like. So if you come back over here, um, it says keep in mind that most teachers keep their projects under $600 and that's just kind of a benchmark that they have observed with successful projects. So under $600 those tend to be funded uh, pretty quickly and pretty successfully. So you may want to keep that in mind. For me, uh, one of the things that I worked on was increasing my one-to-one -one student access to technology and so what I would do is I would purchase one uh, one set at a time and then as soon as I got one funded I would basically just reuse that project and change the title. So uh, if you have a really large project that's fine but you just may want to consider chunking it. So one of the things that I love about Donors Choose is you shop directly in the, in the uh, for, uh, application there are lots of different options out here. There are a couple that I think will be specifically beneficial to career tech teachers. Granger is great. Amazon Business is great. Now, depending on what you teach or what your needs are or how creative you are about thinking about where you can get items, all of these uh, are um, places that you have the option to shop from. So one of the things that's great, again, you shop directly in here. Uh, I do try to keep in mind, I always looked out for these free shipping. So if I go into Granger, okay, so you'll see it pulls up the site. And, I, and I, I have to tell you, I, I was a little nervous the first time I did this because the first thing I purchased was on Amazon. And so it knew who I was, what, who I was. I was worried that I was going to charge myself a, a $600 laptop setup. And, uh, and so I got a little nervous. But it's great if you notice up here, it does say Donors Choose. So you can feel comfortable that you're shopping within your project. That you're not about to charge yourself and check out your own personal credit card. So... If I look for, let's just, we're just doing this for an example. So let's say we I want to go here and this is what I want. You'll notice it says add to cart. Okay. You view your cart, submit cart. All right, it says you're about to pro uh, transfer your products to an internal procurement system. Remember, this is uh, going to sit here and wait for you. It's not going to charge you. Uh, it says will be shipped when the order is received from your company. That company, of course, is Donors Choose. And so, yes, we want to submit the card. All right. All right so here, this is going to show me my selection. You've got your material cost. Uh, we did choose a no, sh uh, no shipping charge vendor, so that's nice. All right, third party payment, fulfillment, labor, and orders. All right, so you've got all of that there. Okay, so summarize. The next part is to summarize on my car. Of course, you can continue shopping if there's other items that you need to build for this project. Over here in my PowerPoint, you'll see I've offered you a suggestion. I know some of us are. are 
wordsmiths and some of us would rather not and so I've tried to give you as many helpful tips as possible so you could pretty much use this for any project no matter what uh, program we teach so help me give my students tools for learning whatever your program is skills preparing them for a high demand high wage career because of course that's what our CTE programs all uh, look to do is place kids in high demand high wage uh, jobs Okay, so we could just put that in there. Notice down there at the bottom it is changing to let me know when I have met uh, the minimum amount of words. Great, you've written enough. Okay, so that all that helps you know when you've done enough. Okay. And again, you'll notice some great tips over here. Focus on what you're requesting. You go into greater detail later. All right, so the next part is your project title. I tried to be, I tried to use alliteration or rhyming or whatever, just so it was eye catching. Because remember, this is not only going to go out to the people that are engaged in your program or know you and your program. There are anonymous donors out there. I've been lucky enough to have some of my projects completely um, finished out by just anonymous donors or donors that just randomly went on looking for opportunities to support students. So uh, since this is collision, I went with a play on the word collide, collide uh, collision and collide. Uh, there are some great more tips for you and it does again just make sure you've capitalized this the way a project should be title should be capitalized okay um, this is in here again you know we've got pandemic stuff so um, answer that one accordingly all right and then we've got to about your project so this one is the one where you're going to go in greater detail that's why you've got the one word um, describe your project and then we've got our describe our students so this one is going to be a little bit more in depth be creative let it fro uh, flow just just get to talking about what you want to do um, now I'm all about uh, taking the shortcut especially because as rapidly as I was posting pro projects out there um, this was just a great way to get information that I know has already been approved and so what I would recommend is if you go to the State Department's website. Oh. Okay, and you go to Department Offices. Okay, so we go here and we go to Career and Technical Education. Okay, if you go to that first link, the first blue link under the red, and you go over to the side menu, you've got program guides. Choose your cluster. Okay, and if you go through and find your cluster there's some great information that's there and already ready for you okay so i actually just took this information right here that's a good concise description of our program areas okay and so this one says So this area here, it's going to pull this out later, so just keep that in mind. Again, here's your prompt that tells you you've written enough. And then we'll move on to the next section, which is subject areas. Now that I've stopped sharing, uh, you can see that this is now going to allow me to move forward. But you cannot move forward with this step unless you have verified using that email. 
Okay, so now at this point you have uh, appro successfully created your project. So now you need to take advantage of these two options here. You can share by email or share by Facebook or both. So remember, the more people you advertise this to, the uh, more chances you have of soliciting funds. So you can do uh, share via email. Okay. And so if you do that, it does already have this dialogue already set up. So you can do that. You can email that to as many as you would like. Um, one thing I want to call your attention to, and it's here in the email, as well as up here, liftoff is a code that you need to use if you do any kind of donations or if uh, anybody donates your project, project, make sure they use this code liftoff. Uh, because that will double their donation and it's very important that you emphasize that to your donors because if they know that their donation is going to be doubled sometimes that makes them a little bit more generous because they feel like they're going to make a much greater impact during this time whether you're using the share via email or the um, share via Facebook um, you are going to be able to uh, to, to advertise, however, you are under a review right now at this point. Okay, so you get share via email, share via messenger, post on Facebook. Facebook is great. This one actually will link directly to uh, your Facebook. Okay, Twitter, whatever you have, um, they're great at interfacing directly to that. So it'll bring you directly to your project. Don't forget that lift up code though. Also, uh, you'll see that you have that uh, link to your project there. So if you want to copy that and paste that into personal emails or use it any other way, flyers or what have you, you have that option as well. So here's what you're going to get if you do the share via email option immediately after creating your project. Or here's what you will see if you click the share via Facebook. And again, it already sets it up for you for Facebook. Okay liftoff code is so important and it's here if you see um, this is where I'm logged in tell donors to double donations up to $50 by adding the promo code so that's for seven days so this is that first initial push of your project okay so if we go over here okay so here's my project okay so there's some more share options there Here's your project activity down here, so it's going to let you know here. Um, this one is also, it says once the project is approved, then those other additional donations will show, because remember that it is in that review period. Okay. All right, so if I go to projects, Okay, you'll see that there's the pro my project is showing up here. Here's that link I just showed you. So you've already copied that there, so you can get um, that link and use it any way you feel is important. And again, that will take you right back into the screen we just saw you. Okay. We're back at the home page. Remember the way to get to the home page is just to click Donors Choose, and that will pull up your page. I want to take you through a couple of areas that are great for you to become familiar with. The first one here under tools and resources is there's a teacher toolkit. Okay, this is a great way for you to, to get some uh, help. But then also down here at the bottom, there's fundraising tools, and this is great. So you can actually create printable fundraising materials. You may want to put these up um, in, in your classroom so your kids can pull these tabs off. You may want to put them at, you know, maybe it's very industry partners that you have, or um, you can actually create these little business cards that have your page on there. So there's a lot of different materials that you can directly from donors shoes are already made for you so you see there's letters 
uh, tarot flyers, business cards. And so I would always provide these to my students and ask them to help put those out anywhere. Uh, you'd be amazed at how much your community wants to get behind you on this. So don't forget to use those. There's even that to create that uh, custom graphic. So and I would let the kids play around with that and let them uh, become the voice for your, your projects. The next thing I want to show you is about the Refer a Teacher program. Refer a Teacher was something that I went to. I used as often as I could. What I found is there were only a couple of teachers in my school that were using Donors Choose, and I became so efficient at creating projects that I would actually go out and find instructors that wanted materials or ask them, hey, have you ever used Donors Choose? And then I would get them started on that. It was so easy that oftentimes I didn't even mind helping them um, by writing their uh, projects for them, and here's why. So if you click on Refer a Teacher, it's going to take us to a page that looks like this, just like you've got over here in the PowerPoint presentation. And so what you get is you have a specific link uh, for yourself with the Refer a Teacher program. If they come through your link, it will uh, get them the matching points, but also what happens is you are going to get a $25 gift code and so you can apply that $25 for every teacher that starts their application using your link your referred link uh, you will get $25 that you can use that gift code to apply to any of your projects now again please make sure you understand if they just go typing in donorschoose.org and they click uh, create an account it will not give you this $25 gift code. They have to start through here. As soon as they get started on just donor shoes, you will get kicked out of there. So all you have to do is click that refer a teacher. And again, there's all kinds of different ways to do that. If you click send email, uh, you could add it to uh, teachers and it's already got this written up. Now, uh, personally, that email was a little uh, too formal for my colleagues and I, so I would just use the link that was here and I would just send it in a self-written email, but whatever way you choose, you can do that. Okay, if you do um, send the email to refer a teacher, this is what it's going to look like, and of course you can adjust this and edit this as you like. Okay, here is an email. Um, this is actually um, came in through my email. Uh, so here's what it would look like if you did get a teacher to sign up and post a project uh, that they started their application through your referred teacher. This is what you're going to get. Okay, and it'll give you this little, little gift code here that's very easy to use to to claim that $25 gift card. Okay, so now let's do this. Let's go back. Okay, and let's take a look at our project. So if we're in our project, right here you'll see Give. Okay, and um, here, this is where you're going to be able to put in an amount. Okay, so it says redeeming a gift card, enter your code during checkout. So this isn't where you would put your card. But so if I had $25 from a gift code, put that in there. Okay. And then it's going to bring you to this page here. So if you are in your dashboard, and you choose your project. Now this is if you wanted to redeem one of your uh, gift codes or if you wanted to personally make a donation to your own gift. So what if I was trying to use my $25 refer teacher gift code, I would say I wanted to give $25. Okay, a couple of things here. Um, you can uh, see it says edit. All right, so one thing I want you to notice here, and we talked about this earlier, when you look at your project, it'll have an amount in there that is a recommended donation to Donors Choose to fund um, the platform itself. However, when you go in to make a donation, you can adjust this. So you can support donate, uh, Donors Choose at up to 19%, 
or you can choose not to. So if I was using my gift code, I would make sure that I put zero on that. Okay. All right, so if I was gonna do apply a gift code permit, I could take that gift code from, um, that was sent in my email, I could take that code there, paste that there, and click apply. Okay, and then that would check me out of there. And if you were just going to make a donation uh, personally, uh, maybe somebody gave you $10, so you were going to put that $10, um, deposit that, and then uh, put that $10 here, you could do that. Okay. Now, what would happen is once somebody gives, so they, they click place my donation, uh, it's going to ask them, do you want to make this an ongoing monthly gift? And it allows them to choose an amount there so that they can give monthly. So that, that is an option there. Maybe you've got some business partners that say, hey, I don't mind doing that. I'll give you 25 bucks a month. Um, or maybe you've got just some of your parents that are really proud of what you're doing. Uh, and then once they do give monthly, it allows them, again, an opportunity to help you promote your project. So that's another thing is that I told my students, make sure that any, that you are also sharing, that your parents are sharing, that everybody is sharing this. The more presence it gets on social media, obviously, then the more donors that you can attract. Okay. And then what is going to happen um, is you are going to get a notification. So this is one that gave to a project of mine. Uh, now, this woman here, I, I don't know that she even had any affiliation with my classroom. It may have been that she was somebody's grandmother, or, or it may have just been that she was a, a, a donor that just came on looking for projects. So, it says reply to this email to say thanks, um, and it also will put that, whatever your response is, it will put that on your project page, okay? So, be gracious. Being a good steward of donations is such a big part of this, because what you will find, and what some of my friends have found is that anytime they posted a project, uh, there were certain people who just chose you as a teacher. And again, when you're filling out your teacher details, think about that um, because there are people that will adopt you for, for no reason other than they just can. So make sure you're a good uh, donor. So you will get a notification within Donors Choose, but you will also get one by email. Okay. Um, now, what happens if you are not funded? So, for example, this project here, my example project said if, uh, Ms. Brown must receive full funding before January 21st in order for this, this um, project to, to follow through. And so, you would get an email. Um, now, here's one. This came to me because I made a donation. But this is what your, your donors would see if your project was not fully funded. Okay. So if your project were not fully funded, your donors that made pledges, they would get an email like that. This that says that um, they deposited your donation as credits into your account and you can still your, use your donation. Okay, so they can either send you that as a gift card, which will again will be a code, kind of like the refer teacher, or um, they can choose to give it to a different project. So it gives them options of what to do if you're not funded. So they, they can still give it to you. Uh, instead of taking that $25 back, they could just give it to you as a gift code so that you could apply it anywhere. Um, so if this person were to choose to send you that donation still, even though your project didn't make, what you will get is an email that looks like this over here. So this is an individual who donated $50 to a project, however, the project did not make its goal, and so therefore the project um, ended without being fully funded. This person chose to send me their donation still in the form of a gift code. So once I created my next project, I would then be, in a, be able to take this code and apply it um, through the gift code um, area. Okay, so next let's talk about match offers. This is something that you want to keep an eye on um, daily, maybe even weekly. So if I'm back at Donors Choose to my home page, then you can see match offers here.
I would highly recommend that you check these as frequently as you're able to. There's a lot of different type of match offers. There's one-to-one -one matching donations. There's also sometimes where you can get a uh, lump sum amount if you complete certain things. I've even had one that had a fitness tracker and if I downloaded the fitness tracker for myself then it would give me um, a code that I could apply to one of my projects. So there's lots of different ways that you can use these match offers. Sometimes they're specific to a certain program or a certain age group. These uh, I search for in Alabama. Okay, so these are all available in Alabama. Some of them are national. Some of these are national. Some of these are specific. So be sure to check through these often. Now, it is important, like I pointed out earlier, that you search for options like these before setting up a project. Some of them can only be added in the development as you create a project. Some of them, however, you can use and you can add on during a project. You'll even get emails from donors to you saying, hey, this week, um, for example, the Bill, week, the Bill Gates um, Foundation is going to match all of your donations. So sometimes these things will come in mid-project. Some of them have to be set up um, prior to the project. I even had one, one time where uh, Sheldon Cooper was donating to or doubling matching gifts and I had a parent that was like really and uh, I, I guess she didn't realize that that was a promotion for the young Cooper um, young Sheldon um, sitcom but anyhow so there's lots of different options there this one was very interesting to me I use this one over and over again this is Google applied digital skills now let me tell you why I like this one what this one does is it tells you it'll tell you a certain number of students that need to go in and uh, do a Google Classroom, an, uh, what is it, an applied digital skills lesson. It'll tell you specifically which lesson needs to be done. This particular one had to be done by 15 students. Um, I Some of them require 20 students, some of them require 25 students, but it was never more than about that many. And if you can get that many students to complete uh, a an applied digital skills lesson then they will send you a gift code for a hundred dollars and again these were up there frequently and I was able to use this one over and over again just using different opportunities or different lessons so it te it'll teach you how to do that how to put that in there it has some great uh, how to and some support and making sure that you finish those but what I liked about it, it was a great opportunity for my students to gain some technical skills, even if that wasn't um, my primary objective. It was great for early finishers. Um, so this was great, a great opportunity to, to gain a lump sum of money, benefit my students by letting them gain some skills and benefiting them also by allowing us to purchase items for a project. So make sure that you check back with match, match offers as frequently as you're able to see what other options there are. We're just about done with this session, so let me show you when you go to log back into Donors Choose, you've logged out, it's the next day you want to come back in. So you'll go up here to sign in, okay? And you'll put in an, your email that you used, okay? And you'll notice they'll say check email. So you can't log directly in. It's very um, good at maintaining security. And so it, when I went to check that email account, it's gonna give you this, a sign in instantly, okay? So um, if I, click on that link in my email, it will then take me in to my page. So this is my um, my page. This is um, the one that I maintained when I was in the classroom. And so if you notice, all of these projects here, uh, just in the time from August to November, I got all of these projects fully funded. Okay, so that, that was uh, pretty rapidly. I was receiving items from Donors Choose and my students were we're very excited. It, it got to be almost like an automatic shipment that they just kind of expected us to, to get some something new for our classroom. Okay, so I want to show you what happens once you have a project that is fully funded. So you'll get a notification um, that says, okay, your project has been fully funded and then it's going to ask you to confirm now. So that's just to make sure that you're still there, you still need the materials. So before they go shipping things there, they wanna make sure that um, that, that project is still gonna be supported when the items arrive. So you will get a notification here that's gonna tell you exactly what you need to do. Um, it says if you no longer, uh, it's a follow these steps 
to um, decline your funding. So uh, if you don't follow through with their instructions, this is kind of the warning email that you get. Okay. However, um, once you do go in and confirm and say, yes, I still need these. Yes, that's the correct address to send my items. It's going to ask you to do these two following things. So again, this is being a good steward of your donations. It's so important to make sure that you get return um, donations. So upload six project photos. Uh, that They want to see that that item that's being used with your students and then also write your impact letter online and it does a pretty good job of guiding you through what to include in there okay and then once uh, once you've um, uh, said yes I have my items and of course this is before you take the photos because you have, don't have it yet but you're going to do uh, it's going to let you know that your items are shipped remember you do not have to initiate that shipping process whatsoever just by virtue of creating the project and um, having donors that have fully funded it it will automatically uh, once you've confirmed say yes I still want these items yes I'm still here it will ship those automatically there's nothing that you have to do to initiate that process other than confirm yes I still want this item and then you can check your status do not forget don't forget as you go through and you get um, excited hopefully about donor shoes the way I did make sure that you're checking back for these matching offers and it may be that there's something so good out there that you uh, say hey I gotta I gotta get on this particular code let's see what else we want and it becomes easier and easier to know what you want and the type of things that you can get funded the more you try this so if you go through, so this is my home page. Okay, so these are the projects I had. You can see you can have some drafts there as well. Okay, um, you can go through here and see your history. Okay, and so I would also um, always go through here and put these um, um, do the thank yous here and by email as well. So you can see all of those. And I always made sure that my, my students knew that um, no matter how small the donation was, it was good. This is also nice because you can see where your matches came from. Okay, and I tried to personalize that as much as possible and making sure that they knew it was a genuine and heartfelt thank you from us. Okay. All right, so we go through here also. So this was one of our projects. We'll see, this was two step for technology. So this is my second of three um, Chromebooks I got before um, I transitioned up to the um, State Department. So you can see this project, there it was. Okay, so let's go back one more time through the important parts. Make sure you're checking for match offers frequently. Make sure that you promote through social media. Make sure that you're asking your donors to um, push those, share via email, share via uh, Instagram or Facebook or whatever. Make sure your students are putting it out there. Um, make sure you use that teacher toolkit. That's a great way to print some professional looking advertising and marketing materials. Put them out there um, anywhere you can that's very visible in your community. Maybe even if you have parents that uh, work at a particular company and they want to take a flyer and put it in their break room, make it part of your CTSO. My students got to where they would tell me what they wanted. Uh, one thing that we got was a couch and we used that for group work, but it made a comfortable place for them to work. Um, they enjoyed getting in there and helping to create and write uh, the projects. Uh, include your advisory committee. You know, if you have your teacher page link, send it to your advisory committee. See if they don't mind passing it out to some, uh, some of their industry contacts to see if they will also give to your projects. Uh, help others. Do the refer a teacher if you know somebody that, that needs an item or maybe they just haven't think, thought about it. Uh, and, and get that $25 gift code with them. Just remember, they have to go through your refer a teacher refer a teacher link. Do not have them start at donors choose uh, and go there. Make sure that you are be being very genuine and uh, very thoughtful with your thank yous. You'd be amazed at um, how much a genuine thank you will bring back donors over and over again.
and then just make sure others are sharing your project okay if you have any questions about donor shoes i would love to help you i get so excited about free things i guess that's the teacher mantra is uh, beg borrow and steal and uh this is a um this is a great opportunity to be able to get those items sent to you directly with just minimal effort on your part. If you want to have an eye device and you open up, uh, press the camera button like you're going to take a camera uh, picture and hover it over this QR code, it will immediately capture my contact information. A little uh, banner will pop up, very small banner will pop up. Uh, after it captures the QR and then you can download my contact directly into your phone or if you want to go the old-fashioned route there's my contact information there I'd love to help you I'd love to share with you my successes so please reach out if you need any assistance whatsoever with donors cheese good luck